forever. Dog. Warning, the following podcast contains artificially dyed seafood, space faucet water pressure, personalized Jedi secrets, and a little play that somehow feels more real than real life. All this plus, Andrew Barth Feldman joins us to participate in the immersive experience that is today's podcast, The Ride. Welcome to Podcast the Ride, a podcast about tax write-offs. I'm Scott Gardner, <laughs> Jason Sheridan. That's a lot of uh, entertainment these days, or technically tax write-offs. It's yeah. all what we're striving to do. Should we be so lucky as to give one of our favorite uh, companies a, a, a big way to, to save money or uh, uh, rearrange money or scam money, whatever it is? Uh, Mike Carlson. Yes, I'm here, and I'm excited to write things off. It's uh, one of the most exciting parts of 2023, <laughs> and we're going to do it. Uh, I, I, You know, you can do it at home. You can do it in a big corporation. You can do it anywhere. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's its own themed experience if you're doing it right. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. And, um, you know, you, you sometimes think of it more with movies and shows lately, but mm-hmm. t- today we're proving that tax write-offs can uh, happen out In the world, uh, highly Mm -hmm. experimental, ambitious tax write-offs that are physical experiences can happen. Um, And that's that's what we're handling here today uh, is is Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. Mm. Uh, And we are... Still, um, you know, we had to take a little time, I think, to to process, mm-hmm. to really to, to deal with the news, the upsetting news that uh, Star Cruiser is, if I'm going to use their terminology, that they are sunsetting it. <laughs> they are going to sunset this experience, I believe, is what uh, <laughs> really Josh Tamara said. makes it sound like the Star Cruiser is cruising to a farm upstate, you know? Because <laughs> it's close to the term sundowning. Which sometimes yeah. you feel like is used when somebody is like maybe slipping away mentally or something. Sure. Mm-hmm. The, so it's a the, the the phrase is meant I think to be gentle, but it feels not gentle to me. It feels aggressive. Well, and then at the same time, sunsetting is weird because a sunset like the then there's a, a sun up not long after the oh, next right. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this, so this actually it actually is not applicable because it will not rise again. Right, at least as of later in the. Are year. there any stars that are destroyed? Did they, is there any stars destroyed in Star Wars? I know many planets are destroyed, but it's literally the ship is called a star destroyer. But I'm trying to remember: are is a star itself? I don't believe so. You don't consider the Death Star a star? No, no, it's, it's just a, a name. It's, it's a, a space thing. station. It's a station. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's no stars are destroyed in Star Trek. Okay, a couple times. Hence, a couple maybe movies. your preference because that sounds more exciting. Well, of course, if Star, yeah, it's a bigger thing. It's a big ball of gas. It's exciting when it blows up. <laughs> Doctor Sauron, of course, in Star Trek Generations, blows up a sun to move the Nexus ribbon, so it goes in the way of the one planet, so he can get taken. Yeah, of course, we know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, we know. Like, the we, we were we were filling it. We were auto filling the rest of that yeah. sentence yeah. as you were going. So uh, I'm um, just trying. I was trying to figure out a Star Wars parallel for like a sun, some sun setting, but never rising. Uh huh. Uh-huh. But, but Star Wars has never had anything uh, as exciting think. as what you just described. No, not with Doctor Sauron. Not as exciting no, as Doctor Sauron. Sauron. No. Uh, um, they never had a Sauron, and, and I guess this thing didn't reach the heights of Sauron in the eyes yeah. of the Disney Corporation, and thus they are writing this thing off for three hundred million dollars. Yeah. End of the year, they will no longer be doing this. Uh, uh, what is, of course, a has been a, a immersive, ambitious, experimental Star Wars themed hotel, a two night experience uh, that's part hotel and part uh, uh, immersive performance. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I mean, a, a crazy thing that they tried, and they're kind of like uh, with buzzwords <laughs> admitting failure. They're ending the thing. They, they, it is flying its final mission, but that leaves us in a weird place because I think this thing is like selling out now that there's no more room left. So we're not going to be able to get there. We're not going to be able to do it. We're not going to be able to do an episode about it with any experience, right? Probably not. uh, Do I have confidence that I could somehow find us reservations? Yes. I could check my way. I check our way into the hotel somehow, Mm -hmm. but will we do it? Will we have time? 
we have so much on our plates. There's a lot of other, yeah, yeah. There's uh, plates um, spinning in the air. How mm-hmm. are we going to juggle them all? There are probably malls and stores to talk about Correct. instead. Correct, yes. So there's really only a, one option, only one way that we could properly cover Galactic Star Cruiser before it's closing. Mm-hmm. We needed a a hero to rise. Right. We needed a, a Halcyon veteran to to stand up bravely and to talk about their experience and what they saw. And luckily, that hero has risen and is with us today. Uh, and that hero, that Halcyon hero, also mm-hmm. happens to be a star of stage and screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. You may have seen him as Evan Hansen on Broadway, and now you can see him starring in the new movie No Hard Feelings with Jennifer Lawrence. Which uh, Jennifer Lawrence? Uh, that was very graceful of me. Like a star Wars uh, uh, correct me if I said that wrong. I, I'm not sure. Uh, but as you're hearing this, the, the No Hard Feelings is in theaters today. Here are now the star of that movie, Andrew Barth Feldman. Hello. <laughs> Wow. Well, I mean, I feel like my first credit is a Halcyon hero. You know, I do feel like before the other things, that's really who I am at my core. We drove to the heart of it. I'm really, I'm happy to to give you that uh, that verbal badge there. Yeah, that's. I really your- appreciate. I have my actual badge, li- and this wasn't on purpose. Like I did, and obviously, there's a podcast you can't see it. Wow. This wasn't on purpose that I had this ready. This just sits on my windowsill, so I don't forget. They uh, give you that, or is that a? Space. Did you buy that? Is that an extra thing? I think they give it. I think they give it to you. It's like in your room. Wow. I think they give you one, and then like everyone else in our room like went to the front desk and was like, "Can we have more medals, please?" And then, <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. What is the legal limit? How can it, technically if they if you ask, they have to give you a dozen a night? That's such a good question. Actually, is there a limit to the amount of medals that they can give you? I mean. There's got to be kind of like a, maybe it's made out of carbonite and that feels probably a limitless resource. The <laughs> house seems very luxurious, so I think it's probably fine. Mm. I'm sorry that you're not going to get even a drop of cynicism from me about this. Ah. Like not even a little <laughs> bit. It's not going to, I wish I could maybe provide it for you. I'm incapable of doing it with most things, but with the Halcyon and the Galactic Star Cruiser specifically, um, you're never going to hear it from me. It's wow. just not going to happen. Wow. wow. Yeah. Well, then this, I think this will be a little like dark side, light side battle because we'll probably have these things where we're like, we saw a video and that didn't look very good. And then you can <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. use your with your lightsaber of optimism we are to first defeat order. us. Today, we are first order <laughs> and you are yeah, resistance yeah, yeah. to use the newer terms. Well, again, I a I have experience with this from the Halcyon, and B I feel like the dramatic question of this podcast now is, can I convince you to take a okay. voyage on the Halcyon? I wow. think that, and that's not. I'm not saying it's my goal. I'm just wondering if it's at all possible, and it doesn't have to be. If it like, if that's not going to disappoint me, if it disappoints the listeners, there's nothing I can do about that. But this is this is big. Wow, the, this the, is. And 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 I have to say, to be the representative. I said this in in my email to you, but to be the representative of the Galactic Star Cruiser here on Podcast the Ride in perpetuity is very meaningful to me. So thank you for having oh, me. Geez. Oh wow! No way! Of course. Uh, uh, so happy to 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 give you that honor. Uh, um, and I and I I I think it's good too. I think it's like this will be uh, a a different perspective than we might. I don't know. There there's a way this could have gone like grouchier, unless I'm wrong, and unless like uh, um. I, I I don't know. I like maybe this was this just great. And does everybody who actually did it think it was great? Is all the cynicism people who were judging it from afar? And if you went on it, it was just uh, awesome. I don't think it's that all of the cynicism is people judging it from afar. I think there's probably two things that are happening. And and I, I could be wrong about this because because of my sort of biased experience. But one I think is that it was a lot of people who went really early and it what it just wasn't ready yet. This is a crazy thing. This is like, no, nobody's ever done anything like this. Like by theater terms, this needed a really long preview period. And it is a theater show. So like it, 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 it did, it needed a long preview period. It took time to get uh, its C or otherwise space legs. Mm. And by the time that I'd gotten there, I mean, it was really, really great. Like really, in terms of the actors and the actual running of the thing, it was so solid. And then secondarily, I think if you're expecting a like relaxing in any way vacation, 
A, I don't know why you would go to Walt Disney World in the first place, mm. but B, you definitely did not have a good time on <laughs> that. <scene. laughs> you don't, you do not, there's no relaxing to be done. You know, it's not like a, a crew, an actual, there's so much of it that is reminiscent of an actual cruise, except for ever being relaxed for like a single moment in time. And so if you go and you're not prepared to just keep saying yes to everything, mm like an improv comedian, but also somebody who's like wanting the immersion, then don't do the immersive experience if you don't want to be immersed. And mm -hmm. I think that people were not prepared for just how much immersion there was going to be. Gotcha. Could I uh, take your temperature? What your Star Wars fandom before going onto this thing? What What is it? What are, what are your movies? Who are your guys as far as your characters? Yeah, uh, yeah just it's, in general. Pretty, it's pretty significant. I'll say that when I, when I was in eighth grade, I wrote with my with my very good friend at the time a Star Wars A New Hope parody musical. It was an all wow. of A New Hope. It was a full musical. We staged it then. It did not go very well. Um, and so then years later, we took we didn't change a word of it and we handed it to professional Broadway actors and we did it at 54 below because I just wanted to do wow. my Star Wars wow. musical in eighth grade again. <laughs> so like this is like it is it is a very significant thing for me. It's not as significant as most. Like mm. I should clarify before I'm tested, like <laughs> I'm not a uh, like Clone Wars, like the Clone Wars I have attempted to dip my mm. toe into many times. And I bet if I had, then I'd have a lot more kind of like uh, background for this experience, even not that I didn't have enough. And in fact, like you don't really need that much Star Wars background. Um, but it's more definitely more so like the central films uh, and like the, the day I've watched most of the Disney plus shows since, but the cartoons I never really was able to, get right. into myself but yeah it was it was really huge for me growing up continues to be really huge for me um it always made me feel like i was sort of a part of something larger than myself and in terms of what are my movies my favorites have always uh sort of like pivoted between five and six but i'll watch any of the prequels any day i really will sure yeah do you have a favorite non-anakin pod racer is that too aggressive of a question <laughs> Is it Sebulba? Um, I, I mean, I like to think about Sebulba as an idea. Okay. Because I'm like, a concept I, wow, of so many people had to approve Sebulba. You know, like yeah. a lot of people had to be okay with Sebulba being on screen. That's true. And uh, I'm I'm pretty fascinated with him as an as a concept more sure. than a character. I think I think Watto resonates with me. Of course, definitely. Yeah, yeah. He's not a pod racer, of course, but from from that sort of a uh, taste of Star Wars, that era, that yeah, Watto's yeah, big. yeah, sure. Uh, can I ask a question? Because you mentioned 54 Below. You did a show there called Park Map. Could That's you right. talk about that uh, and your yeah. parks uh, experience? Oh. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm thankful that you asked because I, I do have to I do have to speak for my own credits here. Um, I I uh, I have this show called Park Map that I did two summers in a row. And I, I, I do plan on doing it again, which is basically my one man Disney adult musical manifesto. Oh um, it's like a, it's like a defense of Disney adults, but also a, an examination of said Disney adults. Um, and I, and I sing some Disney songs, I sing some original songs and I, I talk about just sort of my relationship to the parks, the idea of being an, and, and becoming a Disney adult and the, the, uh, sort of desire for permanence and clinging to nostalgia that that comes with. Um, but also I, yes, I have like maybe not the most encyclopedic that you've had on this podcast, but like near encyclopedic knowledge of the parks. One of the things I do in that show is um, people, when they're walking in, they write down names of attractions on their little, on like little piece of paper and they put them in a Boba Fett Stein. And at three points in the show, I pull one out and I have 45 seconds to tell you the history of it. And I've, I've done so oh almost gosh. entirely without fail. I'm very proud of that. That's one Whoa. of my, it's probably my biggest wow. accomplishment. Would would you could we put you on the spot real quick? Would that be you too could crazy? Try it's really scary. It's it's, te <laughs> it's terrifying. But yeah, you could. I'm I'm scared of specifically what you'll ask me. I don't yeah, know that could. we. I don't have to go hard. I don't. I'm just interested in. Uh, <laughs> do you have any? Do you have any like uh, uh, walls to put up or like? Yeah, is like, it like just generally Walt Disney World no, itself or? Not necessarily. No, I mean I definitely am probably like not as thoroughly versed in the international parks but i'm still i'm still pretty well versed. oh wow, okay i mean i don't want yeah i'm not trying to stump you i'm just interested like you can if i, I said mean, if in. i said horizons horizons is one of the toughest ones actually for oh me my god because i like <laughs> missed the boat so much so that was like that nobody's ever put in horizons and i'm thankful for that but i but i i can talk about the pavilion as a whole how it's become sure 
uh, I, that's the, the, already the more pavilion and now the play pavilion if i'm not mistaken about this then it wasn't something else but i think that this is right horizons i missed the boat on but i would if if i was given that one i would talk more about epcot as a whole and how like right sure it went from walt disney wanting it to be a community of tomorrow and turn like an actual like urban community and you want to be an urban planner and turn it to like an edutainment central right. and now people are mad that it isn't edutainment anymore and that it's actually fun and this um, <laughs> and this is always the battle yes mm-hmm. on every every new announce well it's it seems like a good ride but is it epcot <laughs> yeah like, epcot was never epcot like what do you like people don't live there so it's not epcot it doesn't <laughs> that's count. true yeah yeah <laughs> but anyway but i guess i guess if it's one i don't know i can bullshit my way out of it exactly right as right I just done. That makes sense. Look, that's improv suggestion. Like, yeah. you don't have to add something Thank to say you. about the word. You can <laughs> turn it into other as another. Wait, I'm trying to think, though. What is it? Here, I wait. I'm going to give you an easy one because this was said in an email already. Uh, uh, an email exchange between us. Disney Quest. That's right. I was really hoping that was my first sort of inclination was to come on here and talk about Disney Quest because I am one of the very few, uh, I think perhaps ever in history, that like every year when my family would go to the parks, we would do like a full Disney Quest day. Wow. Like, oh, I, sure. like, <laughs> I loved Disney Quest. I have like mountains of cyberspace mountain VHSs and <laughs> toy and like radio Disney song maker things. So in in terms of the history, they wanted it to be like a like the, one of their Chuck E. Cheeses. They wanted it to be everywhere, but now we have mm. virtual reality in our houses. Like the technology was instantly dated, yeah. and there was no reason to be there anymore. I mean, they never they barely ever touched it. Um, and uh, R.I.P. to the NBA experience, of course. Yeah, that too. Oh my yeah, Cur- cursed spot uh, potentially. Now wait a minute, you yeah. might have stumped me with one. What is the like? Okay, Cyberspace Mountain. I assume that that means they 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 give you a VHS of you the riding track. the thing, or and or and or that you would track. create. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, but then what's the what is the Radio Disney? The thing Radio here? Disney song maker was this. Uh, so this was all, both of those rides are in the create section of Disney Quest, which is where you like make things and get to take them home. And that's Cyberspace Mountain, Sid's Toy Maker. There's like a mm. painting thing. I think there's an Animation Academy and then Radio Disney Song Maker, which is you pick a sort of like template of a song, like what genre you want it to be and who, what kind of person you want to sing, you want to sing it. And then it gives you like 10 options for every line and like some of them are very sincere like love song lyrics and then some of them are like my dogs were in a tutu or something like that (laughs) and then uh and like you get to voice certain lines and stuff and then it plays the song for you and then it like shits out a cd that you get to take home and i have so so many of them (laughs) whoa wow that's a. I don't know that we covered that I aspect think of so. it when we did. Yeah, we did an episode. I never ago. did it personally. I mean, I only went there really once. So, mm-hmm. yeah, Jason, you know about that? Um, no, not really. I knew about Sid's toy make. I think Matt Cardona yes. sent us. He was there very early on, where you could make a physical toy, like a Frankenstein. Right, yeah. right. Uh, That's right. A toy, mm-hmm. and that didn't last forever for sure. I think basically what they did was like you design it. And then it like prints out like a receipt of all the parts and like a little picture, and then you bring it to somebody and they actually make the actual toy. I'm pretty sure is how it works. Oh, like some a little yeah. trick. Yeah. Yeah. But then like yeah, yeah. they'd be like, "Come back in an hour," and they'd like go into a room and put all the stuff together. <laughs> right. It was not a 3D printer 25 years ago or whenever it opened. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Instantaneously. Yeah. It's all okay. So this whole thing was it's it's interactivity uh, and and make it your own, uh, but with some uh, rules. Yeah. Couple. Of- yeah. There's some real constraints on it for sure. <laughs> Yeah, there is mirrors. some 1996 restraints on it, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Which is a good creative thought exercise. Make it interactive, but for 1996. Uh, uh, if you had performed one of those Radio Disney songs in the show, that would have really, like, uh, <laughs> tied it all together. Wow, that's a real... I mean, hey, now you're giving me ideas for the next time we do it. That very well may happen. Next like, Because they have, like, little lyric sheets on the inside. Oh, and wow. You and you're like, this is absolutely nonsense. <laughs> God, I gotta hear one of these. That's yeah. That's so bizarre. <laughs> um, well, that's a kind of maybe an interesting place to compare contrast. That all right? So yeah. there's you were totally down for that. You were that was you uh, uh, early on doing non parks stuff in Disney World, and like we need a whole day for this. I have to do all this interactive, yeah. uh, off the beaten path, <laughs> immersive stuff. So then cut to you. Cut to 
uh, Galactic Star Cruiser premieres last year. I don't know when you went, but you must have like you, you must have been so excited about this, just the 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 notion of it uh, when it when it was announced. So there was a moment where our, my camera test for no hard feelings was going to intersect with our scheduled trip, <laughs> and I was like. You have to move the camera. Like, I can't, I cannot come to the camera test. I will be in space. I cannot be there. <laughs> um, yeah, this was like, this was everything. So I, I just, and, and another example of just how excited I was about this is like, obviously, yes, it is a, a pretty large chunk of change that one's got to spend on the Galactic Star Cruiser. And I, when the, when the sort of prices were announced in the rooms and like a lot of details were announced, I was making this, this uh, show that just came out called Foul Play, which is this like immersive sort of interactive, uh, improvised murder mystery show. Um, and the cast was going to get their COVID test. And this was a show that I, I created with a lot of them and prices came out. And one of them was like, oh man, I just, I want to go, but like, who's really going to stomach this? Like who's, who's going to be able to pay for this? <laughs> And, uh, and one of them was like, we're giving him the money to do it right now. Like, that's what we're here doing is in doing the show that he oh. created. We are giving Andrew Barth Feldman the money to go to the Galactic Star Cruiser. Oh. And that's what he's going to use it for. <laughs> this is generating that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that capital <laughs> real time. Wow. Yeah. Um, geez, no, this is great. This is great to know that it just like uh, and projects you do go straight into that and that it would potentially uh, conflicted with you getting this great role. I'm so I'm so glad you could reschedule. It wasn't you didn't have to it, choose. It was like, I can't tell you how much I like thanked everyone and told them exactly what I was doing. Like there, there was a day on set where I was talking to Gene Stabitsky, our incredible director, and John Phillips, who wrote it with him. Uh, no Hard Feelings saying like, just I started talking about it and I couldn't stop. And then we had to go film and they watched me walk away from this conversation because we were filming and turn to my co-star of this scene and be like, have you heard of the Galactic Star Cruiser? Like to start a new conversation about it as we were getting ready to film because I wasn't ready to stop talking. About it. <laughs> like this is like, it's, and this was months later too. This is all I think about. <laughs> he seems a little distant. I don't know. He seems a little not in the moment. He's talking about this, uh, yeah. some spaceship all is, the time. Is there any alien on the Star Cruiser that if you needed them to like just run some lines with you and put yourself on tape that it would have been possible? <laughs> or is that not probably in there? Uh, book they don't let them do that probably i i'm sure they don't let them do that but <laughs> honestly like 100 percent that would happen so yeah I, i've since this voyage like these actors they really are like we're we're standing there and i, I was there with my friend alex boniello who was in dear evan hansen with me and we're doing this thing and we're in these intimate moments with these actors and we're like i think these are the greatest actors in the world <laughs> like i think these yeah. are my new favorite actors and so I've since I've 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 messaged a couple of them on Instagram and we have like little text exchanges now because no, they're just so <laughs> really brilliant. Jeez, you've made Star Cruiser friends. Uh, that's that's incredible. It's not an easy acting <laughs> job to be in character for 12 hours a day, eight hours, no whatever kidding. it is. Oh, my God. Not yeah, to yeah. mention, like remembering everybody's name. Oh, right. Yeah. Three it's, quarters of which are real and one quarter of which are made up. Right. Like I could go and be like, I'm Batman. And they'd be like, well, Batman, welcome to the house. And like, <laughs> they have to do it. It's crazy. That's wow. That's like almost like a, a school teacher skill or a substitute teacher who has to come in and remember everyone's names. Yeah. Like that they're 100%. only going to spend a day with or two days. Yeah. Oh, geez. Uh, um, okay, so uh, friend group is on board, which seems essential. It seems like you you, you got to go with people. I, no I think to to make this work. Uh, um, so, but then how do you die? Like everybody is down. Is it tough to schedule? Like, uh, or, or or are you going with like gung ho? Cannot wait to do this any any day, any time. That's right. Yeah, you got to go with the people who are going to say yes. It's the same. It's the same thing. And and these were people who were like, it was Alex, who's a big Star Wars fan, a big fan of this sort of thing. Um, my brother Matt, who's like on the same level with me of the parks we've been going together our entire lives. And uh, my friend Julia, who's a huge, specifically Star Wars fan, mm. but uh, a little less eager I I to like engage. And so to watch her open up and like accept the thing, she kind of became the star of the journey because she followed the first order. I'm sure we'll get into all of this. Oh, yeah. She like became <laughs> fully a bad guy. Um, so yeah, no, you have to go with people who are like, yes, I'm carving out my three days of my life to, to be in space with you, 100%. Mm -hmm. You, um, on your YouTube 
uh, channel. I'm assuming it's your channel. Uh, it is, uh, yeah. There, you guys kind of made like a little video diary of your experience. And all of you seemed pretty, pretty all in on it. Yeah. Although going about it in very different ways. I like that you picked fictional names, that you gave yourself character oh. names. <laughs> and pretty much yeah. stuck with it. Yeah, yeah, we, I mean, yeah, 100%. I think, I think that's the move. You come up with a character name, you come up with a backstory, but like, you don't have to like go all the way into like embody, like I was still myself, but my desires were Gorn Dreamweavers. You know, that Mm. was the, that was the the idea. I had, if you see at the beginning of the vlog, I had like a mustache and I was doing this voice and I thought this was the guy I was going to be the whole time. (laughs) (laughs) But it was way too like engrossing for me to sacrifice my own like genuine enjoyment of the thing to to put something on. Mm. So it wouldn't wouldn't allow you to just like uh, laugh with glee. (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) exactly exactly i had to i had to still be myself but within the truth and the stakes of the galactic star cruiser Mm. and so sorry okay gorn dreamweaver gorn dreamweaver he's a gorg monger from the planet glorindor which is a a carpet planet which doesn't exist (laughs) whoa whoa wait so the consistency like everywhere you step is just the that's it great. Feels physically like carpet. Oh this my is one God. of my biggest complaints yeah. about those sequels is that the, most of them are on a sand planet. This is the yeah. kind of creativity I was looking for in those movies. That's yeah. Perfect. I mean, and and hey, you get to bring it to the Galactic Star Cruiser right. yourself. Oh, it's your That's chance right. to rewrite history right. to, to make it Sorta. right. Now, like, can I ask? Uh, uh, do yeah, they please. own uh, your intellectual property that you created <laughs> because you uh, said it to people <laughs> on Disney grounds? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a great. I would be okay with that. Like if I if I open a Star Wars dictionary next year and I see Gorn Dreamweaver, I would I would mm-hmm. die right then and there. I'd okay. be beside myself. So yeah, I sell it. To, I give it to them for free. Absolutely. Okay, great. <laughs> wow, wow. Uh, um, okay, so uh, I mean, I, I let's just walk through the experience. Um, Absolutely. It, okay, so you like you you get to Disney World, you pull into this weird. It's like a it's a backstage area. Kind of, and this odd. It's a building that looks like the. It's sort of the 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 port that's going to take you, yeah, uh, uh, up to the Star Cruiser. I found it a, just an odd detail that it's only valet parking, mm-hmm. so you have to. I mean, it's part. It's cover. That's part of that. Ca- look, you're getting things with that big price tag, but that's right. uh, include the parking is free. But you, they do say bring a couple of bucks if you want to tip on the way out. Mm. Uh, make sure you retain your your earth credits. money so, credits. Uh, yeah, credits. <laughs> well, don't convert them to credits, and then but don't, just remember and then to not be able them to back. tip the valet on earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So the valet yeah. probably would not appreciate credits. <laughs> okay, that's and true. the exchange rate these days just awful. <laughs> uh, um. So uh. But you get the, like the, the what is what, and I know that there's some like transport elevator kind of thing. But is there any, anything you want to tell us about just like the the easing into the process? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I mean, it, one of the biggest immediate surprises was that there's like a line of cast members standing in front of the space station, like waving at you, like w- like they're like mm-hmm. waving, and they're like you walk up to one of them to check in on like an iPad, and they like have all your information. They give you a special magic band and all this stuff. And they give you like water and stuff. So right away, it's like, we're here on this weird thing and we're not pretending that it's not a weird thing. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. So so that was like a big shock. But then, yeah, you walk in, you watch a little video that's like, this is a fake alarm and this is a real alarm. That was kind of the big thing because there's some fake alarms that go off during (laughs) the voyage. And they're like, this is what the real alarm is Uh going to sound like, which is like a voice that's going like, this is a real alarm. Like, it's very Uh clear. And it's not um, C-3PO saying it, though, to be more confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's, no, it's like okay. it sounds not de- like very decidedly not Star Wars. OK, good. And good. I will say, and, and this is not in the vlog, it did happen during our journey. Somebody oh, I wow. think did pull the fire alarm. It was depressing. Like, obviously, it was nobody's fault. But like to be in the middle of it and like really be buying in and then be like touching grass was mm. devastating. Oh, um, oh, you had man. to go outside. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's yeah. like getting getting yanked out of the matrix. For yeah. real. It was that's exactly what it was. We were so sad. We were like, what if we have to go home right now? Like what if there's a real thing that happens? Then we all went in and they were like right away and this is all I'm jumping around a lot, but right away the the sort of like 
Lanka Mock, who was the character, the assistant captain of the ship, was like, um, uh, what a weird detour to Coruscant. Like they were like, <laughs> right back in. well, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was great. I, I, I literally like my, we were, we almost applauded at that. Like, we were like Yes. <laughs> Coruscant yes, looks a lot Coruscant. like Orlando. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Similar yeah. humidity. <laughs> um, anyway, then you go to, yeah, then you watch that video, you go into an elevator, which has screens, much like Disney Quest, actually, oh, yeah. of like, uh, like, you know, like you're like a little pod that's like floating up to the, the Halcyon. And then the elevator doors open and you have the view of the main lobby and there is a real like, oh my God. I'm in space right now. Like there is a real bodily moment of where am I? What is going on? There are cast members there who like are like already in character and they're like, let me show you around. The, like they br they'll bring different groups around to show them around the ship and all the different rooms. And so right away we saw everything. We were taken to our room. Um, and this is like, yeah, a broad strokes overview of all of these things. I mean, I mean, I think one of the big things to talk about is the climate simulator, which is just outside, but they're <laughs> like, because our excursion is on Batu, this is what the weather, this is a room that will show you what the weather is like on Batu, which is just like a very well-themed way of saying, you can go outside. This is where you can go outside. <laughs> Little outdoor if cove. If you freak out, if you, <laughs> yeah. if you get claustrophobic yeah. and have a meltdown. <laughs> go to the climate simulator. And like sometimes the Saja, which are like Jedi light, because they can't have Jedi because like this is like a post-Jedi world or whatever. Oh. Um, they'll like, oh, they'll yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're so we're squarely much like Galaxy's Edge in between episodes eight and nine. A everybody's right. favorite part of Star Wars. <laughs> um, There's nine so, people left on the Alliance, or the good guys, basically. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's yeah. very, very sparse. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but it's, sometimes I, the see, thing I don't know is whether I don't know where in that timeline we are in terms of uh, have the dead spoken or not they have not spoken well, yet hold on, hold they on. Have not, or have they <laughs> it seems like before i think that i think it's before yeah i think that's right it doesn't really come up all that much <laughs> it's yeah. not important to this story okay. palpatine is very important to the story yeah. of nine but not important here right um and the the other big thing i have to mention from this moment in time is that when you go to the room which everybody's seen the room it's really does you're like i'm i am in space this is space um there's like a little screen i had i don't see people talking about this as much as they should that is like basically alexa but it's not at all it's a droid that is like i'm your droid that is here to serve you what do you want to do on your journey and you're like uh go on adventures and they're like i love adventurous passengers and you're like what <laughs> the fuck and then like you have all these interactions with the droid and the droid gives you little missions and w julia who whose character was named esperanza mitsubishi um, <laughs> oh wow she she who turned to the first order killed our room droid this what? is in the vlog. You can do that? Later, yeah, you can like you can like use your credentials or whatever to like hack into the room droid thing and like send the stormtroopers there and like take her wow. away. And then at the end, it was revealed that she defeated the stormtroopers, which was pretty exciting. But we like couldn't access her for like a couple hours. Whoa! Because it was like she's been powered down. Like it was. It it's crazy. Wow! And could she like send the? Can you be like, we need more towels? Or could she do that? <laughs> I don't think she. I don't think she served any actual practical purpose. Okay, she's just I part of the story mission. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm yeah. pretty sure. And also, again, like there are not that many cabins here. Everybody's pretty close to the lobby where the stuff is. So I, I, I wonder if she could, I don't think so. I, I'm pretty sure that's not right. I think you still have to like call or whatever. Maybe not, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we just didn't mm. use her for that. Cause like we were never in the room besides the time. <laughs> right, didn't right, need right. towels, never came up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, this, that gives me a, the, the proximity to the lobby just reminds me of a, a, just a question I, I had. And I don't know if you know the answer cause maybe you didn't do this. I've just been curious what happens if you go out into the main into the lobby at three in the morning what's going yeah, on if you're just there in the middle of the night when probably not a lot of story is happening do you have any idea you're in space still like there's like there's screens in the lobby that are like this is space the, the lights are dim we did we did do this like after stuff was happening okay. i think the bars open pretty late mm -hmm. i feel like there was one night it was open till like 2 a.m or something mm -hmm. wow. okay. um, pretty good and yeah. so you could go there you could play sabak you could order some drinks and get some get some bar snacks and like there's kind of like, like weird a... desolate late night that spaceship. part seems yeah, good. yeah yeah, yeah. I, think I'm, I might play it 
Wait, although Scott then you're going to sleep during the day and wake up around 10 p.m. Yeah, skipping missions. <laughs> and, and then I, then the I just sit story. solo in the climate simulator. <laughs> yeah. Have a moment to myself. I think the climate simulator is also open pretty late. Like if you need to get some air late at night, you you can. I'm pretty sure one of my friends like went up the climate simulator, took a call and said it was uh, extremely peaceful. Okay. Um, and there's also like a water like you can go. There's like a big water pump i guess that you can go and get like water in the main lobby that's the main reason to go to <laughs> okay, the lobby okay. in the middle of the night <laughs> so refreshments yeah that's a good. game yeah, something definitely. to do okay interesting interesting uh, um these rooms i'm so curious uh-huh. about because i think a lot was made out of i feel like it seemed to me like photos make you think these are claustrophobic rooms but then people yeah. who did it seem to say it's not so bad where did you land on these rooms I agree. I mean, it was it was pretty comfortable for for four of us. It was like two of us in one bed and then each of us had a bunk bed. And like, that's not like the number one most ideal sleeping (laughs) situation. Mm, Sure. But again, like everything was comfortable. It's fun to be in space and you're not here to relax. Like by the time you get to bed, you are so tired from interacting with these people that like it is comfortable and it is like. It, it still feels like you're part of the story. I think night one, we like turned off the space viewfinder in our room and night two, we left it on. We were like, we can't, we have to cling to, we have to cling to our final. Oh, neat. Uh, That's like kids day. like sleeping in the tent with <laughs> like, <Exactly>. oh yeah, <laughs> with some mobile like flashing lights or so. Wow. You kept the space on all night. Did you Yeah, do the that's bu- right. Were you in the bunk or in the bed? I was in the bed. Alex and Julia claimed the bunks pretty early on. Um, and my brother Matt and I uh, shared a bed. Gotcha. Um, and that was that was fine for all of us. <laughs> Do you th- could a man at six that six three fit in one of the bunks? I I I mean, listen, I'm not the authority here, but I sure. would imagine so. They're pretty long. They're comfortable. Like everyone was really excited to sleep in the bunk beds. Actually, like again, if you're you're exactly right, it feels like camp, and like mm-hmm. that is kind of part of the charm of it. I think. You're being told and tell it and, and like being part of a really wonderful story at every second of the day. Like they they slip notes under your door and they're like, we're sorry for the first order interference that's happening on the <laughs> ship. Like you get like notes in your room. Like it's mm-hmm. crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think I would try the book bu- because uh, uh, look, w- when my daughter was born, uh, I slept in one of the worst chairs for like two nights in a row. And I'm fine. I'm fine. And I, I'm sure one of these bunks are much more comfortable. So mm-hmm. I think I would go bunk. The if bunks I are great. I would, I if I if I get to do it again, I'm going bunk for, for sure. sure. Jason's bunk. Jason, I think you because you want your small spaces. I like, yeah, them. I like a cozy space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I oddly was eyeing those bunks. Like, yeah, these rooms look a little small, but I think that bunk. Yeah, maybe I think this is, this is an all bunk. Uh, or you you would be next time, Andrew. I think you hit the nail on the head by calling it camp. Like, I feel like a lot of the. Um, marketing or early views of it referred to like oh it's like a cruise ship on land yeah but the thing about that is you know there there's a star wars bar on the newest uh cruise ship disney cruise right. ship totally and it seems like it's got a little bit if you just want a little star wars it's like the bar you know has big screens it jumps to light speed there's a lot of dry ice drinks <laughs> and then you can yeah. leave and then just be on a cruise you can just go do whatever you want uh, yeah, that's right. As opposed to this experience, where it's like it is all encompassing, it is a two, three day immersive theater experience. So I think camp, where it's just like, uh, you know, if when you're at camp, you're at camp. Uh, yeah, you know, you that's can't hundred percent right. Yeah. yeah, I I think that's a great way to put it. And yeah. uh, might have helped them in the marketing because I know some <laughs> of the marketing camp. material <laughs> yeah. started to get a little confused. Yeah, it's like Star Wars camp. Like you're at Star Wars camp. Star Wars for fantasy a few days. camp. It's not rock and roll fantasy camp, which I keep getting ads for, where you can play bass with Tom Hamilton from Aerosmith or Pete Best, the original drummer of the Beatles. Are you going, Mike? Come <laughs> on, this is your Galactic Star it's Cruiser. Either, it's either this rock and roll fantasy camp or Galactic Star Cruiser, and I think they're probably similar prices. <laughs> I no <laughs> so. no slight to Pete Best. I did not know he was still with us. Absolutely, yeah, he yeah. is. Okay. You know either? I, I don't think I knew that either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't know Pete other. Best was still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, he's still rocking. <laughs> no shade, no shade yeah. to Pete Best. So I'm, their I'm ads happy. should be Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp: uh, the best way to discover that Pete Best is still alive. <laughs> yes, yeah. he's one of. The, I think um, he's the top guy. Build. 
Pete Best is. I mean, honestly, I'm like, yeah, I kind of want to go to rock and roll fantasy camp sure. with Pete Best. I, that sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, mm. Yes, it's like camp. It Emotionally and how engrossing it is, it's camp. In terms of like, your brain really does kind of think of it as a cruise. Like when we did the excursion to Batu, we kept saying in total earnest and without thinking about it, we should probably get back to the ship soon. Like, and, and like all of the, all of the big story moments are kind of veiled in like cruise activities. Like they'll be like, right. let's play this. Like, we're going to teach you this game on the bridge. Everybody come to the bridge, to learn this game. And then like Chewbacca shows up and it's like, Oh my God, that's a huge story moment. So that's the way that they get you to all these different places. But of course not everybody goes to all of those things. So different people get different mm. points of the story. And like, it's a pretty smart way to like engineer people toward being in the right place at the right time. Right. Oh, wow. And had you done galaxy's edge prior to this? I had. And, and that's another thing that I, I think about a lot is, is how incredible it would be if it was my first time there yeah. as part of the star cruiser, because they really do an, a like deeply impressive job justifying both of the rides within the story of the galactic star cruiser like it is your mission to do the things that those rides are asking you to do and we were talking about it like we had all done rides of the resistance a number of times but the thought of that being like the first time in your story as a passenger on the galactic star cruiser that you see kylo ren Mm. or that like you like this crazy thing is happening to you and you were just on the the house yet like and they really do make a whole thing out of it when you get back that like oh there were like it's it's part of the story hondo is part of the story with smokers run you have to get that coaxium that coaxium comes back later it's (laughs) wild it almost seems like you have to do the star cruiser to complete the story of galaxy's edge I, I, going back to Galaxy's Edge since the Star Cruiser, which I've done a number of times, it's I love Galaxy's Edge. I've always loved Galaxy's Edge, but in relation to how it feels in the Star Cruiser, it feels empty. Like mm-hmm. it, it really does not feel. It, it feels like I'm I'm I am on this like weird planet. We went to Oga's Cantina and we had like we like set a password to the bartender and he gave us coasters that had QR codes that we had to scan in our app that like gave us a new thing like. It, it's if it, oh. you really do feel like you're in a Star War. The yeah. special Star Cruiser stuff at the Cantina. That's I don't think I knew that. Yeah, everywhere, every, and you can book it through. Like you can like when you're booking your Star Cruiser vacation or whatever, you can be like, hey, we also want to do the lightsaber. We want to do the lightsaber workshop, and because you're like you wear a thing when you go to Batu that like is like a Halcyon pin, and so all of the cast members know to like greet you knowing that you're part of the halcyon to like give you the halcyon stuff in different places that's going to help you later in your story like Mm -hmm. it it really is a crazy it was always meant to be these two things together which is why it's so uh, right and if so sort of sad and it feels like that's the the star cruiser is the place they didn't from what we understand we're not insiders really but that was star cruiser's the only place they didn't cut like the budget on having everything be crazy immersive so yes. I feel like Matt Performers. might be part of it where, yeah, like you're describing this incredible experience and a lot of that stuff was not, it was kind of taken out of the actual land itself. So that's, that's right. the difference when you're feel the difference you're feeling while wow. being yeah. there. Yeah. And I've got to say, like, I mean, I mean, cause this is such a big thing, like in talking about the price, like worth it, quote unquote, is obviously such a relative thing from person to person and what you want to spend your money on, what kind of money you've got. But that is how much that thing costs. Like, that's just how much it costs to do the thing that the Galactic Star Cruiser is. For what you're getting, if you pay that money, it is the, uh, an entirely reasonable price. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, I mean, there's so many performers just in yeah. general. Yeah. Like, and like once in a lifetime, like all the every experience on it is only happening <laughs> then, mm-hmm. essentially. Like yeah. the way you're doing it is only happening right there to you. It's personalized. So... Uh, that seems worth. I, I liked the way I was reading uh, the, the touring plans. Lynn Testa's breakdown of of is it worth it, and he does a really specific breakdown of um, these are parts of the country and world. I think that you should see before doing Galactic Star Cruiser. <laughs> like, if really I'm being funny. honest, <laughs> that's funny. you know, make sure like Alaska uh, <laughs> is is really remarkable and Hawaii. Uh, you know, maybe do this route, but and then just assuming all of that is important to you, then then. Uh, <laughs> That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Full. That's that's reasonable. It's it is it is it is 
excess, you know, it's like, what do you, what do you, uh, value like emotionally and creatively? And for me, it's, uh, I, I have dreams about the galactic star cruiser. <laughs> sure. Let me ask you this question. Um, and now you're, you're talking to an older man who, uh, feels like there's a little bit of a lack of some of his friends, on the ship, mm-hmm. a hypothetical yeah. older man. This could be any a hypothetical older man, man necessarily. Not necessarily you, and a, and a cooler older guy, like a guy who you wouldn't really know he's an older guy. <laughs> oh, I just like, assumed <laughs> cool as soon as you mentioned this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he sounded cool before. Yeah, guy, cool. If we're talking, yeah, you hear his, yeah, hear his voice. You're like, ah, got to be mid twenties or so. Uh, um, but when he sees videos of of some of it, and he's like, I am missing visually some of my friends. I don't want the sequel characters to go away or anything. I just, where are my people? Like, and you're cool you guy really like hedged his bets six. really well just now that he doesn't want the sequel characters. Well, I, the cool, I've been the cool very guy's consistent. really good at hedging the bets. The cool guy has been consistent. He doesn't want the sequel characters to go away from Galaxy's Edge. He just very, wants some of more of his cool friends. Guy. That's mm-hmm. all he was. Okay, okay. Yeah. He's a cool yeah. guy. <laughs> Uh, what would you? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I hear you, and I have to say that I, I, I really do think this is one of the brilliant things about the Star Cruiser because it's not about Ray and it's not about Kylo Ren, it's not about those guys. Right. Like they make a big, you know, appearance and and they're a big sort of payoff, but it's more about the like WWE phenomenon of seeing them do the thing that they do as opposed to like seeing those characters in the flesh. Right. Um, and in fact the fact that there may be less sought after characters, I think lends to more urgency and, and more access. Um, the characters that are like the, the sort of new made up characters on the star cruiser are so exciting because mm-hmm. if you had a guy there dressed up as Luke Skywalker, I could look at him and I could know that that's not Luke Skywalker, uh, but this right. gentleman standing in front of me and giving me one of the best pep talks of my life is Wraith Cole. As far as I'm concerned. <laughs> well, and also, sure, like, yeah. I'm, I am Gorn Dream. Like, I right. know that I'm Gorn Dream. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is a story that I, I don't know. And right. thus, it has a place for me in it. And it has a place for these spectacular actors. So I think if the thing you love about Star Wars is sort of, like, just the characters, mm. um, then no, it's probably not for you. But if it's the world and the feeling, I think this is one of the for for me and what I appreciate about Star Wars, this is like my favorite Star Wars story is mm-hmm. that of the Galactic Star Cruiser. Is it still like, would you say, cause like, I, I honestly, I mean, from everyone I've talked to who's done it, they all like it. So like, I'm, I, I assume I would have a good time doing it. I'm I, yeah. and all kidding aside. Um, is it almost something where like, if it wasn't even branded Star Wars, it would be just as cool. Like, is, is it almost just like the performers are so good and it's just the activities are so much fun. You're just like, ah, it's a cool space thing that reminds me of Star Wars. It's almost not even the point in some ways. Absolutely. A hundred percent. I think Star Wars helps to give it uh, that that boost that of, of recognition. But like, if you don't know Star Wars and this is all gibberish to you, that is totally, totally OK. And in fact, I know Star Wars and I don't know a lot of the stuff that they're talking about. And that is OK because it's about this this sort of isolated story. Right. And I think that it being Star Wars probably puts a lot of pressure on it to perform like a very certain and specific way, just as everything Star Wars always has. Like there's always this like precedent that people expect Star Wars to meet that it could not ever and has never met oh, yeah. everything's like, so hyper judged which you see with this yeah. too like yeah right. if, if they had invented from whole cloth a big immersive uh you know experience that you stay in and sleep in like but that space, you weren't viewing under this judgmental lens that like the right. space is. mountain hotel full of original <laughs> space mountain characters <laughs> it doesn't have as much nearly as much pressure as star yeah. wars does yeah, because yeah. yeah all yeah. your friends don't have to be there or the version of it that you like doesn't have to be represented just one friend right. like the countdown guy 10, 9, yeah, yeah. there's only one friend in <laughs> Space Mountain. <laughs> and then like somebody playing like Dick Dale playing guitar on yeah, the yeah, stage yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Or, you need to know where that, in, or I guess in G- world where that sound is coming from. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. I was just in London and they have a bunch of stuff like this. Like not, not as sort of long form as the Star Cruiser, but like things that are multiple hours long that are these immersive storytelling experiences. There's this thing called Phantom Peak that I didn't get to do that I'm really hoping to soon. Um, but they they know how to invest in those kinds of things. And, and I think it is true that this is where the future is headed. And, and something we were talking about during it was like, could, could this work with Marvel? 
And the answer is no, because what would I do? Would I become a superhero? I know I'm not a Marvel superhero. Like with Marvel, it is about the characters. And so this doesn't work. I think the reason it works for Star Wars is because as great as the characters are, it's about the world and the feeling and the sort of like thing that happens when Star Wars works. And Star Wars really works on the Galactic Star Cruiser. Hmm, that makes hmm. sense. I mean, I will say this. Uh, if there was an X-Men's mansion, I could just like sleep in Wolverine's room for two nights. I would absolutely <laughs> do it and love it. If I could just hang out, that would be fine with me. You don't want your own I'm room? I'm playing me sleeping in Wolverine's room. That's I am I'm Mike playing. Carlson, cool older guy. <laughs> And I'm sleeping in Wolverine's bed because he's away for a while. And I can just roam around, go down to the danger room, see what they're doing and go, ah, cool. And then I can go upstairs and like have a drink in Professor X's study. To be I clear. I mean, that does sound pretty great. <laughs> could you, but you wouldn't want that you have your own bed that's only your bed and full access to Wolverine's room. You need to know that it's his bed and that he slept there, let's say, within the week. <laughs> yeah, I would like to know that he was there. I mean, you could all. But also that he's not going to be there. Like you also mm. don't like this is a this is a whole an immersive Marvel X-Men experience <laughs> where you're sleeping in Wolverine's bed, meaning he will not be appearing. The, man, yeah. the mansion's <laughs> empty, mostly empty. They're like <laughs> fighting apocalypse overseas or something. Because <laughs> if he finds an intruder in his room, you're getting those claws to your throat. Like, yeah, no, or not. Yeah, fucking kill you. you not a kill move, but we'll at least a threat. Like, who are you? Yeah, it's an empty X mansion. There's no interactive elements other than you can just roam the, through the halls and see what's going on. And you, you've chosen a school setting where there's often any, <laughs> an, any number of students that they could easily get, go like, "You're a new student." Like, no, no, you, you. No, I don't want to be. I don't want that pressure. Crashing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just an older. And there's guy. also no alcohol. Like it's a school. Like it's this. this you're just. Sleeping at the school. I mean, hey, I'm on board. We're just brainstorming. We're just brainstorming here. You, you have to have <laughs> snuck it in. It's got to be in a flask. Well, I snuck alcohol into this school. If you start opening drawers and secret cabinets in Wolverine's well, room, you're going to find some alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, so. that's yeah. one of the missions. Professor on. yeah. X has some find brandy. Sure. Brandy. <laughs> oh, that's that, yeah, right. That's you know, the room to go to. Yeah, yeah. Hank McCoy. This beast drink. Do we know? <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah. <laughs> um, Andrew. Uh, f full disclosure. Um, on that excursion day, when you went to Batu, did any of your party, did anyone cut out to go to Pizza Rizzo or do a quick <laughs> Tower of Terror lap, la you know? Not one of okay. us. Okay. And wow. people on our cruise did, especially ones with little kids. I personally advise against it, for sure. Yeah. Like sure. My, like, I was on Batu for the first time. You know, like, I really was like, this is, I, I, you know, you get on the bus that feels like a transport shuttle. Like, it's a it's a crazy thing. So, no, we did not go to Pizza Rizzo. We did not go to Woody's Round of Barbecue. <laughs> we, we, we stayed we stayed in Galaxy's Edge, and it was also like a really hot day. So we were like, let's go and do our missions, and and then yeah, <laughs> and get back inside as quick as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it's a simulator of a toy themed barbecue. It's just mm. it's the kind of thing they would do. It's it's not a real one. trying to in character explain like, look, I this was really stupid. I know the shuttle leaves at at a certain time, but I made a reservation for Woody's Roundup Barbecue because I knew I knew we would. Want you know lunch what? And... You know what you could have done. You could have gone to. Uh, 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 we just talked about this. The fifties Prime Time Cafe. You yeah. could. It could be. Uh, you could say, "Well, this is where Dexter Jetster uh, uh, has his famous <laughs> diner." You could have yeah. at least. I feel like that one at least could have worked as far yeah, as that's, an explanation. I guess this is the criteria, is if you're going to do anything else in Hollywood studios, you've got to justify it in world. Like, if you're mm. going to go watch Muppet Vision 3D, you've got to be like, these are like, you know, the Ewoks and Yoda's like cousins and stuff. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. good. That works. You can tell from the voice. This is somebody Yoda's related <laughs> yeah. to. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Star Tours is like when you go on a cruise and then you need to take another shuttle to like the hiking through the woods. Yeah. And then you have yeah. to get back to the cruise ship. Sure, you know? sure, sure. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, that's um, right. What What has happened story-wise before, I guess it's, it's a second day thing that you that you go to Batu. Uh, um yeah, just to, so that we get into some of the, the story of it, like, like yeah, what's what's crucial. happened thus far at, at that point? What, what what's kind of the initial stuff that that you tackle? Yeah, I mean, obviously, here we go. Spoilers ahead. Um, the first order has 
come upon the ship yeah. um, because they 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 are they fear resistance sympathizers uh, that on the ship and that there may be many of them and so they're here investigating. Um, the crew is trying to be welcoming, but uh, there there are and also Chewbacca I believe has arrived at this point. Chewbacca has in fact uh, uh, docked onto the ship. Cool. Um, so those are kind of the big things, but that's like major main storyline. Uh, maybe the maybe the first order has already. This is a big spoiler. Taken the central droid out of commission. This is a droid we're made to have great like sympathy for. Um, SK six twenty maybe something like that. <laughs> and um, and uh, they 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 think the droid is having secrets, so they like kill the droid basically. Mm -hmm. And that's a big moment where more we're meant to turn. Uh, upon the first order or not as uh, julia discovered um but yeah first day is really more tutorial than anything else like those are the big moments but we were like wow this first day was amazing how could it become any more immersive than this and then everyone was like so today was basically your tutorial now you have to decide like which path you're going to take and it gets real tomorrow and it, it did it was crazy so that's everything that's happened i have to speak to my story particularly yeah i didn't d decide going in like which sorry you hear the Oh, good, um, yeah. I didn't decide going in like which path I was going to take. You can be resistance first order, like Jedi, basically, or like smuggler scoundrel. Um, following Gorn Dreamweaver's heart, I fell in with the scoundrels, um, who is this character, Wraith Cole, who is uh, Gaia, the, the performer on the ship. He's her manager. And he is I trying love there's to, a space manager, that's great. a space pop star manager. Incredible. We were we were pretty, pretty obsessed with the concept of somebody in Star Wars having like a manager. But it but it felt very <laughs> like, you know, like grief carga in the Mandalorian. Like he's like a bounty hunter manager, except for talent and for Gaia specifically. <laughs> um, and uh, they're trying to make some kind of drop off. They're trying to do this whole thing. But basically, the big thing is they're trying to steal this stone from the heart of the ship. Um, the the Haya Nanea stone, and this uh, this this stone is made to feel like oh they're scoundrels so they're trying to steal it for money. When you get to know them, you discover that this stone was wrongfully taken from Gaia's planet. Mm -hmm. She's a Twi'lek, right. and it was uh, her planet. Oh God, I can't remember what her planet's called now. But like the the Haya Nanea stone was taken from her planet by like basically colonizers, and used for like on the ship on display, like maybe provide some fuel or something. And Wraith on Gaia's behalf is trying to steal the stone back. I found this cause very noble, especially since Gorn Dreamweaver's home was also perhaps under attack from the First Order. He was really worried about that. People trying to get um, free carpet, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yes, Spilling stuff the, everywhere. <laughs> mining, <laughs> mining for carpet on the, I mean, yeah. you look at the, you look at the, the Death Star and, it's, and, and the sort of Star Destroyers and they're just, they need some rugs, and there's one place to yeah, get them, and it's yeah. the carpet moors of Glorindor, of course. Just dampen some of that sound. It's all it's very That's echoey too, and yeah. severe in there. Yeah, yeah. They need they, they so could use right. a lot of rugs. Yeah, yeah. Soften the landing when Kylo Ren's you know throwing people all over the place. <laughs> um, so, so this has happened by this point. Now, I I, I want to skip ahead because I, I this is a story that I feel is is it's urgent that it's told. This is sort of the big takeaway for me. I oh, think. Boy. So we get to talking to Wraith Cole in person. Now, there is an app component to all of this. So we've been messaging, quote unquote, Wraith Cole on the app. But it's like preset responses to our preset texts that are like, I want to hang out with you. Or like, no, I don't want to hang out with you. And like oh, okay. getting a sense. So we we go up to Wraith Cole in the real world, the actor, whose picture is on the app, by the way. So we can like know mm. who he is. Oh, wow. um, and we go up to him. and We're like, Wraith, we've been messaging with you. Um, we're here for whatever you need. Um, and it's notable that my brother Matt, his whole thing was like, I love Gaia. Going into the ship, the one thing he knew was that he he, he knew that Gaia was a character and he decided mm -hmm. he was a big Gaia fan. So he goes up to Wraith and he's like, I love Gaia. I'm a big Gaia fan and I'll do anything for Gaia. And Wraith is like, anything? And we're like, what? yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do anything. And he's like, well, then I've got an extra secret mission that's like not on your app. Like this is like a, a separate thing. So they so so this is just immediately one of the instances of like the the ship itself rewarding you for being like into it, you know, right, and right. like saying yes to things. He gives us this like QR code for us to scan on our app and tells us about this stone and all this stuff. Next day we run into him again and he's like, the heist is happening tonight at 3 p.m. in the cargo bay. Don't let anybody follow you. It's gonna be a small, a small group of people. 
Like this was, re- and like we were one of a few people who was invited. A lot of other people ended up being like, what's going on in here? And like came oh, wow. in and kind of <laughs> screwed everything up. But then he's like, we're going to steal the stone back. We go up to the, the deck. So this is, this is pretty deep day two. The first thing he uh, says, he's like, we need a distraction. And he turns to me because we've now had a few conversations. He's gotten to know me personally. And he says, this is where you come in. And he said, we need something lovey-dovey. Uh, maybe some vows or an engagement. And I said something that is true, which is that I am an ordained minister. Um, I am an ordained minister in the real world, just kind of for fun. It's never been required of me. (laughs) And and so as a distraction to get the stone, I performed the renewals of vows of two real married couples on the ship. Wow. (laughs) This is in the vlog. And I, and I stand up there and I'm like yelling, like, can I have, Everyone's attention, please. My name is Gorn Dreamweaver from the Carpet Moors of Glorindor. And I am here to celebrate the marriage of Jerick and Z and Liz and Matt. Because one of the couples was really into it and the other one was not. <laughs> Regular names. <laughs> and from there, all these other people and all these other kids had all these roles. And, and in the vlog, my I think it was my brother and Alec were both recording. And you can see the way that like the stone passes hands and all these different people are intercepting different actual characters. Because like the captain couldn't see about this. So like. We had to like alert rate that the captain was coming. Like it was like a whole involved thing that a hugely important device in it was that I was very, very loudly proclaiming the renewal of vows of these two real life couples. <laughs> wow. Which, well, yeah. I guess, okay. Like a renewal, I guess it's not so important if it's binding. Like what that, that, that uh, <laughs> renewal didn't count. And yet the actual ordain, like it feels like it had some significance. It's, it's crazy. You had that up your sleeve. Yeah, it, it worked out. And I think it was my brother who reminded all of us that I was ordained. And then it, yeah, it, that's the only time that's ever been useful, actually. Wow. You didn't do it to get friends married. You just did it to do it. To hopefully one day get friends married. You know, like that sure. one day I'd be asked to do that. Wow. <laughs> that was the, That's crazy. I wonder what, like, they probably have some, like, prompts, like regular, like the things, ideas that they would give to for a distraction and in a, in a normal scenario, but then they're also like, Oh, if we got something on the fly here, let's just go yeah. with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's like a sort of bare bones idea for what, what they're going to, what they're going to do. And then like, let the guest kind of guide you. And a lot of things they'll do is also kind of trick you into thinking that you guided them. Like the actor who played uh, Sammy at one point, he comes up to us and he's like, we need, we need a way to get uh, the stormtroopers away from this thing. And, I was like, oh, maybe, you know, like if they've got to if they've got to get to the brig or something. And he was like, wait, you want to put them in the brig? What? And it's like, oh, that's what you need to do. And you just kind of put those words in my mouth. Mm. So like <laughs> sometimes they, they like really need to find a way in. But other times there's a lot of room for for uh, for like play. And And later that day, there was another need for a distraction. Like we had broken into the bridge to like get the coaxium or whatever. And we were there with Rafe Cole because this was like the scoundrel track. And he was he was like. Well, if we need another distraction and can't think of anything, I mean, I know my guy Gorn has got it. And I was <laughs> like, I'm healing father issues right now in real time. Like, this is like really <laughs> happening right now. Wow. Thank you, Wraith. <laughs> uh, I, it would be really great to hear from some of the performers because I, I imagine you did a hell of a job performing, distracting. You knew exactly what you're doing. You're a, a performer. I would imagine there's some versions where they're like, and then you're going to be the one with the distractions. And someone was like, walked in the corner was like, hey, you, hey, you motherfuckers over here. Everyone look over here. And they're like, what? no, 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 no. He's not like that. No, no, no. No, he's pulling his penis yeah. out. God. Yeah. No, but can... no, you're, he's peeing in the corner. It's like, somebody stop me. Put the, put the pretzels down. Put the bowl of pretzels down. We need you. Uh, you know what? Somebody, we got someone else. We're going to get someone else. Somebody has to have done a shitty job like that. <laughs> yeah. Def, I, yeah. Th- this this particular actor sort of uh, later confided through Star Wars terminology, may I add. Uh, he, he like, thank we, we at, on the last, at the very end of the experience, went to thank him and the actors like very much in earnest being like, and we kind of said like, we know you can't break character right now. And we accept that and understand, but we need you to know how much this is meant to us. And, and this actor in particular, uh, like, thanked us in return because he was like, it's good to know somebody who I can like really hand the reins to Mm. like, not (laughs) like, and that was for our whole group. Like it was like this guy, this poor guy who is working so hard and you never see him sweat. 
he needs to, in order to us not see him sweat, find ways to pass the baton for even like two minutes. Yeah. Like, oh, and yeah. like give a, like holding court responsibility to somebody else. Yeah, um, right. So that he can continue to be like full battery, you know, ready yeah. to pull. Um, and also the the actress playing Lanka Mock, who I think was like, yeah, cruise director. Last day we did the same thing and we like thank her very earnestly. And she's like, just so you know, and I mean this, if you ever want to come work here on the Halcyon, there's always a place for you. Oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa. That's the ultimate and compliment. That's something I carry with me every day. I'm like, I could always just go do that. You, know, you could. I could, I could yeah. So it is possible. This was, this was something we uh, talked about on our Patreon, but we discussed the notion that if Jason was weird and rude enough at the 50s primetime cafe, maybe he'd get invited to play maybe a I'd permanent grandpa character. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if the same rules apply there, but that at least, hey, somewhere in that Hollywood Studios area, uh, uh, that kind of recruitment magic is possible. There's a headhunt. Some of the actors are also headhunters. <laughs> um, <Good to> <laughs> uh, ironically, for the, the, the you bring up renewing the vows, uh, I was at a wedding recently, and only after the fact did I learn the officiant was in the original cast of Galactic Stark, was one of the no. lieutenant oh. Lieutenant Wait. Croys, was one of the <gasps> Imperial officers. It was a Croy? It was yeah. a Croy. I wonder which one, because our Lieutenant Croy, I, he's one of the few that I don't know his real life name. <laughs> is like one of my top three favorite actors of all time. <laughs> I think he's out of the game now. I think he's retired from theme park acting. Now. Yeah, wow. I think that's he, right, which is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty sad for me personally. Yeah. All right. So that's you're, you're on this scoundrel track, correct? Yeah. What's what are your, your friends are on others? What's going on? What, what's happening in the other uh, the, the stuff you're not seeing? That's right. We all kind of fell into our own thing. So so Matt, my brother, was sort of on the scoundrel track with me, but ended up falling into a lot of resistance stuff. And so he was really close to the main story and would be asked to like, you're going to have to like pass this uh, suitcase of coaxium around to somebody else around the ship. Like he was like part of like bigger main story stuff that we weren't invited to. Because by the time day two rolls around, this computers through the app and through the different relationships have kind of figured out who's the most into it and what track you're taking. So you get invited to specific oh. things and they have a list of who specifically is allowed into this room and they won't let you in unless you're on that list because of you following a specific track. Um, and so, so Matt was invited to this resistance stuff. Alex went the Jedi path and um, he met Ray before the rest of us. Like he was in a room for like some kind of like, force training or something that was kind of the guise that it was under but actually they discovered that the luke skywalker's uh hollow cube like a hollow cube that was luke skywalker's mm. was was uh found on batu now yes this was a mission of his he had to go on batu find this hollow cube through the app and like scan different crates and stuff and then he's in this room and ray comes in they open the hollow cube and an, apparently and i have not seen this with my own eyes actual hologram of yoda um, mm, oh. it appears and like gives uh, advice. And and this is something that only Alex got to see and like 10 other people that were, that were on the voyage. Wow. Mm. That's cool. Was there, is there yeah. a, a interesting, is was there a comp, do the other paths have anything comparable to meet a legacy character such as Yoda? One of your friends? Any of my yeah, friends? No, I, nobody, nobody else really gets to meet one of your friends. Interesting. Um, that that's that is true and and in fact julia who took the first order path was hoping she'd get to have a relationship with kylo ren uh which she did she did not unfortunately but she did have a very tight-knit relationship with lieutenant croy um yeah she was invited to like similar stuff as like matt in the resistance side of things but for the first order so like Matt's team would go to the engineering room to like fix stuff mm. and uh Julia's team would go to the engineering room to break stuff basically. <laughs> wow. Um, That's fun. But she really was th there is this striking moment that I will never forget. Julia who is the biggest Star Wars fan but like maybe the least into this kind of immersive storytelling going into it. Um it's the it's the very big finale. And a lot of the Galactic Star Cruiser is long and gorgeous monologues, like characters delivering these huge monologues about like their ideas about the world and like, frankly, race and things like that. Race is discussed very much <laughs> on the Galactic Star Cruiser. And in this moment, Lieutenant Croy um, is responding to a speech of the captains, which is saying like, this is a ship of good people and these people will not let evil triumph. And Lieutenant Croy responds and says, 
you'll be surprised with just how many First Order sympathizers there are. And he starts to list them by name ah. and like point to all the people in the crowd who are First Order sympathizers. You realize just how many of them there are. And like the third or fourth one, he says, he goes, Mitsubishi. <laughs> <Who's our laughs> name? And we were like, she won. Like she won the Galactic Star Cruiser by having wow. her, na- her fake name said in the big finale of the Galactic Star Cruiser. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and earlier too, um, the actor playing Sammy, who's like, you know, uh, one of the good guys, found found out that she was hanging out with us, and we were like, she's a first order sympathizer, she's got to go. And he was like, get out of here. And he looks at us, and he's like, was that Mitsubishi? The captain warned me about her. Like stuff <laughs> like they, it really is a is a nutso thing that they do. That's yeah. great. Uh, do the first order sympathizers get punished at the end of the experience at all? Or <laughs> no, I think there is a sense of like. You know, obviously the bad guys lose. Right. Um, but but there is then a sense of like, look around. These people have shared this experience. Like, and then you go, I like it, it is very much like we all love each other and it's okay. And then we go to the you you all go to the bridge, and where the screen of space was is like a video of fireworks, basically. Like it <laughs> obviously is not real fireworks, it's like a video of fireworks that we had bought into it so much by this point that we all four of us cried at this like wow. video that was playing of fireworks. It w- fully worked on us. I could see that. I mean, that's such a like you have the you have to be there's so much effort, emotional effort, I feel like for a few days where you're like almost just like the the blowing off of that has to have some sort of like emotional reaction. Point. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you- absolutely. Do you okay? There's there's discussion of of race and these big ideas in the uh, in the experience. Do you feel like somewhere in the in the text and the narrative of Galactic Star Cruiser is the solution of how to uh, make everything better in this country and world of ours? <laughs> <laughs> this 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 was a very kind of curious thing. Like 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 we're like we're like sitting in like the the big dining room on the second night and and kind of the big event that's happening is the captain and the lieutenant are kind of having these dueling monologues and you kind of see where both of them are coming from the good guys and the bad guys like and that is sort of i think one of the big ideas of the star cruiser is it's like once you get once you boil the first order down to an ideology and not like the people who are working at the highest level it's like ah there's some there's something there like there are people who believe this ideology and would follow the first order in the real world but the captain's like says something at some point that's like, you know full well that I can't work on any other star cruiser because look at me. And we're like, oh, cause she's blue. Like Whoa. it's cause she's blue. <laughs> like that's what she's talking like. And like, we, they never talk about that in star Wars. And so like, I don't, I think it is an effective, uh, an emotional tool for empathy. I don't think it's like, you know, the end all be all of sort of, uh, like racial analysis so but, we, but we especially put some of the like worst people in our country or world into galactic star cruiser <laughs> then have them like learn a lesson cry at the fireworks and they come out and they fix everything <laughs> they're like we have to we have to give you know the stone back to the people like the proverbial stone back to the proverbial <laughs> yeah. twi'lex Tucker like there Carlson is a real, and there Ben is a, Shapiro, their their ways are <laughs> healed after two days. The Santas, the LCA. The, uh, just, I uh, talked to uh, Latin and Croy, and now I'm different. <laughs> I've changed. That's what I'm they have nice to now. do with DeSantis. That's yeah. how they have to fix the DeSantis problem. Right. Wow. Just put him on the Star Cruiser. The lawsuit's gonna go away. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> yeah. His they have blue growth. shrimp. I've never seen such a thing. <laughs> 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 that you knew what the human spirit was capable of. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, um, what have we? Well, how, let's just do basic stuff like food, drink. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna, I'm like, uh, how so, was it? So. Great, like <laughs> wow. genuinely good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and and not to mention all inclusive. You know, like right. you don't pay. F- like blue milk is so good when it's free. Blue uh, milk is so 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 good when there's a l- fountain of blue milk, and it's unlimited blue milk. <laughs> yeah, unlimited. There's they literally have like a like found blue milk fountain. Do you know that, Jason? I did know that. I think that's available 24 hours. Is yeah. it? I'm yeah. pretty sure. I Water. think it's 4 a.m. You could have a yeah. glass an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could make money on the whole thing Where are in the, terms yeah. of blue milk. Yeah. Where are the refreshers? Where are the refreshers? <laughs> Jason has a full body like suit 
that is actually just like a big, um, some sort of big receptacle. Oh yeah, to what's, get as much blue milk smuggled out of there as possible. What Star Wars language for doggy bag? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder actually. Wookie I don't ba- know. Wookie I do know bag. that <laughs> all like meat is bantha. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. They, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They always call it bantha meat, and like on night one, they came around. And again, we were just so bought in by this point and we didn't even think about it. We were so excited to be there. And the waiter comes around, they're like, would you like more Bantha? And we all look at each other like, oh, more Bantha? Yeah, we'll, I, yeah, we'll take more Bantha. Like no, <laughs> no uh, like facetiousness about it. I, the second night, the dining experience is a tour through different uh, planets and cultures. So hmm. the actual chef of the actual Galactic Star Cruiser comes out and is like, this next dish is from Coruscant and like, or like a uh, Mustafar mm. and like the whole room turns like red and they like light it lava colors and play like Mustafarian mm, cool. music. Yeah, and I'm then he that. explains the dish and like how it was used with like fire and stuff like that. And we were like, wow, this is from Mo- this all the way from Mustafar. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's, is it, it uh, I'm just guessing at the, is, is night one, a Gaia performance and night two is more like a story happens like you were describing mm, yeah. uh, kind of a back and That's forth. right. That's right. Night, night one is a big Gaia performance and a lot of story happens in the Gaia performance as well. Like that is another like just great reason for everybody to get in one room. Like Chewbacca appears and like they're chasing Chewbacca around and Lieutenant Croy's trying to get Chewbacca while Gaia's performing partly as a distraction and partly just like that's, that's what's happening. Um, and she's amazing. The songs are really great. You can listen to the album. Um, and uh, but yeah, then second night is more story driven. I think that maybe there was like it's part of a story that Gaia is supposed to have a performance, but then it, it's canceled. It can't go on for some reason, maybe because of first order interference. Um, and so then she does like an unplugged show that feels like a big protest, mm. like on the do- <laughs> on the deck. That's cool. You, like she's like there and like one of the characters plays guitar and she's singing all the songs and everybody's singing along from the songs they learned the night before at the big concert. <laughs> oh, you know them by then, so you can the kind of songs are it, second nature. That's we are crazy. like at part of the protest. We're standing there like going hiya, 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 na 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 ya. Like we're like so into <laughs> we're really, really there. And there's like call a lot of call and response on this thing. Cause like I think one of the resistance uh like terms is ignite the spark, light the flame, or something. Mm-hmm. And they really bl- get this stuff in your head they really teach it to you that by day two you're saying a bunch of like you're like somebody will say ignite the spark and the whole ship will go light the flame and like they <laughs> wow. like they like teach you all these star wars words it's crazy you don't you're, you're not thinking about it 48 hours in even watching a video of just here we're getting on the elevator i i, I just watched somebody's pov of doing this and hearing a bright suns on the yep. way which is the like the mm-hmm. greeting and galaxy's edge and it really made me like oh yeah remember that <laughs> remember mm-hmm. bright yeah, yeah. suns that was sure yeah. something they did for the first 10 days mm-hmm. and never again but the bright said if you like the bright suns thing mm-hmm. it's uh, uh there's well. so there's so many more of it you're, you're living in the bright suns mentality i said when we did the batu trip i said bright suns to every single cast member i had <laughs> i was so excited to say bright suns and i had the little halcyon medal so they were all like bright suns <laughs> yeah, VIP on Galaxy's Edge. I have a couple quick more practical questions. Yeah, uh, um, please. Did Did you see anyone trying to get hammered? At, at, like, as far as like, is it mm. open bar there? I don't think it is. Right? Don't you, you have to pay, pay for I don't those. Think it's open bar. Okay, you have to pay so for that's the alcohol. that's to prevent. Yeah. That's to prevent people from hammered but getting hammered. There, there were there, there there definitely were people who were substantially drinking, and that was the thing <laughs> that they decided to do. And you could like you totally that is a Star Wars story of your own, you know, right. I if I had to live to, a Star Wars the, story, that's the Star Wars story. I would live. <laughs> this is reminding me of something pretty important that happened. Actually, there was a gentleman who was Obi-Wan Kenobi like and he didn't work there and we were <laughs> very confused. But he looked like old Obi Wan, like old, like he had like white hair and a old white Ben beard. Kenobi. Yeah. And he would sit and he was there definitely by himself. And he didn't talk to anybody and he would just sit in rooms and kind of like look wistfully at the room. <laughs> and like, he was just, he was, we called him Phoebe one Kenobi eventually. Like, and we were like that story wise, how do we justify this for ourselves? That's the force ghost of Ben Kenobi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then later learned that he doesn't, didn't work for the hotel was there as a guest, but does work for the Disney parks as a photographer, as a real guy. And used to be, a Walt Disney World ambassador. 
Wow. And, th- wow. and this guy that we just saw as Obi-Wan Kenobi constantly walking around, like walk being Obi-Wan Kenobi. It was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. Anyway, all that to say, yeah, you could get drunk. That <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Did you drink? What, what, uh, how, are, how are drinks? I was 20 at the time. You were 20. So, then. Oh, oh, you man. could not. Yeah. Wow, this wow. Is, I, oh, I didn't realize. I just turned 21 this past month. So oh, it was, wow, uh, wow. And you didn't it arrange an it. You didn't arrange it to go back so that your first legal drink could be some bubble and blue. Uh-huh. You have no idea how much I thought about doing that. <laughs> like, you have no clue. Like, I, I, so I said it to like the Disney influencer people. I was like, I want to turn 21 in the Galactic Star Cruiser. And they were like, it's too late last minute. We can't get you on the Galactic uh, Star Cruiser. You would actually uh, try. Um, oh my God. Wow. wow, wow. I, f- I fully was like, that's how I, that's what I have to do. I have to turn 21 on the Galactic Star Cruiser. Mm. Um, I, I still, I feel like that's a big thing I have to be is 21 on the Galactic Star Cruiser. Um, but, uh, but I was told that the drinks were, were stellar. Sure, and sure. that there's like a lot of fun, really fun drinks. And like, th- those are also like from different planets and they have them in fun glasses and presentations and things like that. So yeah, no, the, the drinks, the drinks were given really positive reviews. Did gotcha. here on earth, did you get anywhere close to a, a dumb star Wars drink as the first legal drink? You know what? Yeah. There's a, there's a bar uh, not far from where I live that has, it's like a tiki bar and they oh, have yeah. this drink that's in like a, a big whale. And, and it's like a straw. Oh, nice. oh, great, no. great. That was my that was my first drink. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Oh, happy to hear uh, it. Um, uh, water pressure in the shower. <laughs> How was it? Very practical. Uh, yeah, it was good. No, the showers okay. and stuff were good, and you do feel like you need to shower the Star Wars off of you a little bit. Yeah. So no, the showers the showers were positive experiences for us all. Yeah, gotcha. the bathrooms solid for sure. For sure. Okay. Did you use a thermal blower? Or what you mm-hmm. what we on Earth may know better as hair dryers. I don't think any of us did. No. Okay. Are there like do people talk about the thermal blowers? At I all? just or, like, I they, saw like... a photo and it, I think it comes in a little bag and the bag is labeled thermal blower. So if you <laughs> were not awesome man, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. I, I mean, I think other things are just shampoo and conditioner. They don't go out of their way to. Invent new terminology there, any, there right. but <laughs> thermal blowers. Is there yeah. any like prequel behind the scenes where like George is explaining how Anakin gets his hair a certain way? Oh, you know, it's a thermal blower, and he just puts the thermal <laughs> blower up to his up to his head. You know what's wild? Actually, like one of the things they give you when you're there is these Star Wars comic books that take place on the house even oh, that yeah, allege wow. that. Han and Leia had their honeymoon on the yes. Halcyon. Yes. Oh, I yes. forgot this detail. They conceived Kylo Ren, right? On the Halcyon? Uh, I, 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 is or is it funny? Anakin and Padme? Is it that Luke no, and Leia? I think, it was I think it's Han and Leia. I think it's, oh, okay. I think it's Han and Leia. Yeah. I think yeah, they Han and Leia. conceived Kylo on the Halcyon. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you be right. Is there mm-hmm. a way to know which room and to ask for that room? I mean, depending on the performance. There's a weird <laughs> energy at that room. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> A bad yeah. energy. I wonder. I wonder if there's any way to tell in the comic book. I didn't read it. I just skimmed through and I was like, wait, are you <laughs> alleging to me that they had, they had their honeymoon here on this place you made up last year? Oh, Leo, where's the, th- the thermal blower? <laughs> <laughs> I can't my find the thermal blower. My, my poofy 70s do yeah. is really. <laughs> I need to dry off my balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, thermal blower. Here's a question. At the end of the night, you know, you guys are back at the room, you're winding down. Did anyone like flip on that hotel room TBS or Food Network? Oh, yeah. You're watching Shark Tank. Watching cable. I don't think so. No, I think we were all pretty committed to the bit. Okay. Like, we were like, we're going to do this. You can, like, they do show you, like, oh, when you turn on the TV, it's like you can airplay to the TV and they like <laughs> show you how to screen oh, okay. her. And you can and and the specific example that they give you is it's like a th- that you see like a screen cap from uh episode seven and it's like you should screen mirror star wars onto the star wars tv sure <laughs> they're trying to suggest <laughs> watch some Which tales is like, I don't from wanna, the universe. i don't want yeah it's like i don't want to watch star wars when i'm in one like that's so not what i want to do like know ken, that it's a movie right now it's like watching a ken burns documentary on some war 
You know, it's like in yeah. universe. Who cares? You could you know? watch it. Yeah, it would have to be a documentary right. about uh, when the Empire struck back. You couldn't watch yeah, the yeah, Empire yeah. Strikes Back. That, that that's that's too weird. Yeah, Bert. Like, wow, would... that's fun. Actually, watching it as documentaries is a really fun idea. Or otherwise, like dramatized versions of what really happened. <laughs> oh, look, right. some yeah. actors have taken it upon themselves. Right. Uh, <laughs> some fellow named Erwin Kirshner, I guess, has reenacted the events that uh, we know from. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be fun, though. Uh, um, what's just, just in the, uh, it was sort of winding it down that like, I, I just want to make sure we, we get to like big uh, moments in the story. I guess on that last, yeah. how does it, like, Where's night two? Let like it's like okay, our last night. We're going to bed. What are you left to to think about? Is like is it hard to sleep because the story is weighing on you at that point? Yeah, honestly, yeah. Like it was really. <laughs> we had like we and this is skipping your question, and I will go back to it. But like we would, we woke up for three days after and texted in our group chat, like plug me back in. Like I can't. Like, <laughs> I. Have to, I I, w- I remember falling asleep on the plane and waking up from like my nap on the plane home and somebody was walking by to go to the bathroom and I thought it was a stormtrooper that I had to like talk like genuinely my brain was like you have to talk to them to get uh, like your mission completed like I, I was oh. still really in it um but yeah the last night this is the kind of amazing thing and I I had I, this year was my first year watching Wrestlemania after this mm. Halcyon experience and I was told that I would like it because of my reaction to the Halcyon experience because the last thing that happens is you're at this dinner and then the fake alarm, not the real alarm goes off and they're like everybody onto the deck. And that's where this big sort of fight between the, the captain and the Lieutenant is happening. And this really, really incredible thing happens where they manage to, in this one big moment, tie up every single storyline that you could have possibly followed over the Mm -hmm. course of your time there. Like there were characters that we had barely ever seen that had like endings to their stories that still seemed meaningful enough to us. Like they really do it all and they tie it all together and emotionally and, and fulfillingly. um, And, and I could get into all that, but I think the big thing to note is this fight between Kylo Ren and Ray that happens, Mm -hmm. which is really fun to, to say that like, Oh, so we're just deciding that between episodes eight and nine, Kylo Ren and Rey were in the same room and had this like huge lightsaber fight. Mm -hmm. Um, But this is where the like big lightsaber with the slap bracelet thing happens and all that stuff. But one of the things that is not touched upon, I I feel enough in people talking about the Star Cruiser is the different ways in which Kylo Ren or Rey interchangeably will use the force to slam the other's head into a railing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did notice this in a video. Yeah, that's a little more brutal than the typical. It was amazing. <laughs> like, we were, like, standing there being like, oh, they're going to fight, and then that happens. You're like, oh, my God. <laughs> this is brutal. <laughs> um, but uh, th- that was really amazing. Every story is tied up. There's, like, all these surprises that happen. I, I think the big payoff... Uh, has to go to the character of Sammy. I kind of, I even don't want to say like how and why, but he really got all of us. Again, day one, we're like, wow, this silly Star Wars thing. Like we're really excited, but come on, this is silly. All of a sudden we're standing here in the deck, on the deck, every single person on the ship going, Sammy, 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 (laughs) impromptu of nothing. Like no cast member was making us do this. And the actor playing Sammy is taking this in so in earnest, like, wow, I did it. And like, like integrating it into the story. And then Lieutenant Croy's got to yell over it. Like it's, it's, it's so amazing. That's the other amazing thing about these big moments with everybody is that a kid could make it go haywire in any second. You know, a kid (laughs) could walk up to Lieutenant Croy and this did happen during a big moment. Like a kid walked up to Lieutenant Croy and was like, I think you're a bad guy. And the captain was like, all right, sit down. We're having a real discussion. He's like, no, I won't let him talk to you like that. (laughs) Like, like this whole thing. And then Lieutenant Croy ended the scene early, basically, but said, come child, we have much work to do. And like Mm -hmm. gave him a special little experience in another room. Like they have to give full respect to everybody who wants to talk to them because what is the point of this thing otherwise they can't like ignore a kid so it's pretty amazing seeing these actors navigate that so masterfully yeah yeah it's it's interesting you say wrestling uh compared to wrestling because uh we went with a certain friend of ours buzz buzz once to a wrestling event but he put wrestling in probably the correct 
uh, perspective, he said, it's like we're all in a little play. And yeah. he is right. And, and it's what wisdom, you're saying is, got it. yeah, you're, what you're saying is we're all in a little play, but that's the fun of it. That's why we're doing it is that we're all playing that's along. Exactly right. And it's more fun when we're playing along. Uh, it um, is. If you like wrestling, you like the Galactic Star Cruiser. Wow. Wow. Uh, um, and then like, I, I mean, because I watched a video of the the finale or maybe like a preview they did of the finale for, for vloggers or whatever. And it, you could certainly see how it, it ends on this high note and, and, and the emotion you're all feeling uh, like I, I get all that. But then how does it transition into, OK, get your bags? Like, what is how do you how do you it seems like such a big come down? Yeah, I think there is a moment to maybe like like a cruise, like I think you can put your bags out in the hall and like tag them and they'll have them ready for you outside the next day or something. It is a really big come down. It's not it's not left to be like out of universe or anything like like mm. I feel like the characters will be like because because again, they're a, running a cruise. So like the characters will be like and you can like leave your bags outside and and our amazing crew members will come get them. Like it doesn't feel out of place for something like that to happen. Um, but it is for real depressing. Like wow. the, the, the come down after was, was very, very visceral. And we still text in our group chat about it once a week, because now we keep tabs on the actors on their social media. So we're like, send their posts, send their posts and be like, Oh my God, they're dating or and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You've kept it going. So did you then transition into more Disney world or did you go home? We transitioned into a bit more Disney world, which I would argue wasn't a mistake. I just wouldn't advise it. Like you mm. feel like you're like, I've, I can't like, you still feel like you're back on earth, you know, oh. like, you, you, like we had like an extra day at like, I think Epcot. And I, I, I would I would suggest that if you're going to do the Galactic Star Cruiser, just go and do the Galactic Star Cruiser. Like, don't like make don't don't pair it with hmm. a longer Disney trip, I would say, because it really it's is like such a different. Yeah, it really is its own thing. And, and going to Hollywood Studios during it, like you get you get some rides in there. I get I get like if you don't go to Disney, I go to Disney so often. Like if you don't go as often as as one does and this is like your big trip and you want it to be part of it, I get it um and and do it but but i would advise the ideal star cruiser experience is is just doing that and like then it's just kind of you you're pretty drained going back into the parks like you you, if you've done it right you've given your all to the to the stars Hmm. so at least do it at the end maybe of of a trip you gotta make it the finale yeah 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 at the the, you're gonna do it i think that's right Wow. Yeah. Okay. Or, yeah. Go to go to the Magic Kingdom. Do some rides. It just it really feels like you're like, oh, all these people who are just here for today. They don't know. You know, mm-hmm. like I think that's part of it. They don't know what you've been through. You know, you've been, you've been through something with these hundred some odd specific people. It's strange to then be in like, you know, a line a community world community. Right. Or whatever it's called. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, um, I so then. So what's your reaction uh, a, a few weeks ago or whenever it was that they're shutting it down. Now I'm like afraid to ask how you felt and how the group chat felt when this news yeah. broke. Yeah. I mean, I got texts from multiple people who I have not talked to in a while <laughs> uh, a- asking if I was okay. Um, <laughs> and one of them and and one of them who I was talking to, but, but like, out of the art Gene Stupnitsky, the dire- our director of no hard feelings <laughs> texted me <laughs> and was like, like, like I'm, I'm so sorry. You know, this is, uh, this is really, like, like they really, it really was like a real, uh, point, point of, point of sadness. Like I, I think obviously, you know, the writing on the wall was pretty clear, but like uh, of the direction it was taking, uh, it was becoming emptier. Um, it just wasn't, wasn't selling the way they'd hoped. And, and like, as a, as an artistic risk, you know, my heart really does go out to it. Obviously, like, I, I'm not going to sit here weeping that this big corporation's big money thing didn't play out. But like, as as this really, really incredible theatrical um, thing, not not succeeding in the way that it had hoped, that is that is always going to be at least a little sad to me. And 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 I will always be very thankful that I went like, I don't, I don't think I'd be able to 
I don't know how I, I would regret it forever if I if I didn't get to do it. Hmm, geez, that's a, well. I think I think some listeners, maybe some hosts, are going through this right now. <laughs> maybe forever regret because if we can't, I think every I think I think we're boxed out, right? Unless Mike works some magic, unless you like if we really do some hacking. if we do to, to, if we chat about it, there's no way I couldn't do it. Okay. <laughs> wow. Uh-huh. I think you could do it, and I really want you to do it. <laughs> Maybe you got to prioritize oh, now. Well, we got to talk about it. <laughs> you just, you just got it. Like, and 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 really, this is the number one piece of advice to everybody who's going. You just have to say yes to the whole thing. Like, obviously, it's campy. Obviously, it's silly. You have to set your kind of ego and cynicism sure. aside a little bit. But like, you have to say yes to everything and like seek out more immersion. Because I, I will say, like, you can't. It's not that you can't escape the immersion. It's that there isn't anything else. So like on day two, this like my brother and I were running around and doing all this stuff. And this dad and his like poor younger son came up to me, came up to me and my brother. And, and they were like, the dad was like, excuse me. Um, do you know about any secret stuff happening? Uh, we, we can't <laughs> seem to find the secret stuff. Yeah. And it's like, oh, buddy, you had to earn the secret stuff yesterday, my friend. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Too late. Too you. late. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that what a sad tale. I, I, yeah. I have one more question that it, this is, I don't know if we're going to find the answer. And uh, there's just one thing everybody's wondering at this point, which is what happens to the building? They made a weird oh, spaceship hotel. That is in a, yeah. the backstage of the park. I mean, you know, in theory, you could retheme this or do something else with it, except that it, it requires an odd little bus ride. The, and it's not right next to the park. The rumors are that yeah. they've thought about other things to do or make it a day trip or something, but it's just they're not going to do it. Like supposedly, it's over. Hmm. Like there, there were apparently they were in, they were trying to figure out other things to do, Mandalorian th- overlays or something. Hmm. Yeah, and then, yeah. They, and then day trips to it and. Yeah, it feels like no. It's just that building's gonna rot until they need the land. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I mean, us there, we were like, oh man, if you know, in three years, God willing, this thing stays open, which obviously it has not, and they like make a sequel story for people who have been before. Because honestly, the biggest audience for people going on the Star Cruiser is people who have already gone on the Star Cruiser. Like the <laughs> like they kind of, I feel like the the people who were gonna do it did it at the beginning. And so to do like a follow up story and it's like, oh, you can have the same cast, which obviously you can't have because a lot of them don't work there anymore. Like it's like it, it, it was this sort of wonderful dream, which the Star Cruiser always was like it's this wonderful, wonderful idea that I think was executed very well. But in uh, in the time we're living in the society, we're living in the place that it was, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It just it just didn't hit. I and, think. Uh, sorry. That sucks. No, that's it. That's just, <laughs> I was just going to say, I think that the issue with it is that nothing visually or, or video wise can convey what you just did for like an hour and whatever 45 minutes yeah I it's feel like the it video this, doesn't show me the experience you have to feel right. the experience which is very hard to convey even when in a written review or even seeing things because obviously video makes things look less cool in general unless it's a very high quality video but like what you're you just did a better advertisement than any of this of the social media posts we've seen for this thing in a year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I um, mean, I mean, that was something we were really feeling, too, because like you, you, you watch those videos. and You're like, oh, I'm paying, you know, six thousand dollars to do this, you know, lightsaber training where I'm holding this stick. And it's like, no, of course not. Like, that's not that's not the thing you're paying for. You're paying for like what that means to the thing as a whole. And it's, it is a really, really hard, difficult thing to convey. Like I, this is the first time I'm even bringing up the lightsaber training, which right. was really, really fun and amazing. And like led Alex to be like, I want to follow this, this Jedi journey. Like that's <laughs> what it's about. It's about the story as a whole, not, you know, how cool is this very one lightsaber thing? If they just had that, you know, as like its own thing, it would be lame, but it's because it's part of this whole story that you're being told um, oh, and you're, you're part of unfolding it in real time. And that fractions are never going to tell you the story missing. and some piece of video is never going to do it or some right. weird promo video starring a Goldberg's cast member that is yanked <laughs> within 48 hours oh, right? Man. because it makes that the sense so to look tough. less than good. <laughs> that was yeah. so tough. That was so, so tough seeing all that stuff play out the way that it did. And, and oh. I listen, I, I understand we, we just did this doing, t- trying to convey these immersive experiences. You, you, you just can't because that's the very nature of it. It's supposed to be very ephemeral and only exist in the moment. So it's impossible 
to, 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 I think as soon as it's figured out how you can market something like this, uh, yeah. there will be, it will open the floodgates for so many more experiences like this. I think literally the biggest problem with doing an immersive risk like this is that nobody has yet figured out on the planet earth how to market it. Mm. Yeah, I remember when Sleep No More opened in New York and all of the marketing for that was very vague. It was like, yeah. it, it was building a mystery and hearing people who went and they tell you bits of it's like, oh, it's kind of, there's little Shakespeare bits and it's jazz age and, and you don't really get, you don't get it uh, uh, hearing about it as opposed to the people who saw it and they were like, yeah, if you go on a really good night, it's amazing. Yeah, and I think Sleep No More, which this could absolutely be very easily compared to, it just has the luxury of being sexy. Like, it, mm, yeah. Sleep No More is amazing, but you're like, oh, I'm gonna, like, I think something about it being this sort of secret speakeasy kind of thing, as opposed to this thing that from the outside seems so corporate and false, um, as opposed to Sleep No More, which seems very, like, dirty and intimate. Um, this is not, obviously, the Star Cruiser is not dirty, but it is very intimate like anytime mm. that we would kind of like want to play we'd like go up to you know one of the actors and be like hey you did great work back there when you you know <laughs> like uh got the coaxium or whatever and and they would like see us trying to play but like keeping a distance and they they literally like i remember uh, justin the actor who was playing right on our voyage like grabbed me and like leaned over and whispered in my ear like hey thanks for having my back back there i really appreciate you and i see what you're doing and uh, you're you you mean so much to me. Thank you. And he like walked away, and I was like, a tear, a single tear rolled down wow. my face. Like it, like it, it. They really like, if you are willing to be pulled in by it, they are so desperate to pull you in. <laughs> it's like the end of the Transformers ride over and over and over again for a couple times a day, or a couple times in a week. Yeah, yeah. If you know, I don't. Mike thrives on being told by Optimus, but Optimus Prime saying that he's proud of him. Right. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. Like, when when they pull into the station at, at the Mummy and like they're clapping, like all like that's what it is. Like, oh my god, I did it. Mm -hmm. But it's, it really is just for you. But it's yeah, yeah human reaction. Yeah, it's a human being saying it to you. Jeez. It's an actual connection that I had with an actual person, even though he was Wraith Cole and I was Gorn Dreamweaver. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. But it's so much about so much more than names at that point. It's exactly. About feeling. It's about living a moment. Hundred percent. I this you have taken us on a journey of optimism and a, a journey of hope. Uh, mm -hmm. One that I will not forget uh, anytime wow. soon. Much as the as you will not forget your star cruiser journey and i feel like i should uh be, be respectful to the mythology and say gorn dreamweaver you survived podcast the ride um wow. i uh uh it's this this has been such a pleasure really uh uh, uh fantastic we're and, proud and, of them um, we we're, <laughs> we're proud of you uh um <laughs> I guys. take it in. It's in a single tier. We see, we see, we see it. for the, the the listeners. We we were watching. I, I think oh, a, a bunch of single tears are streaming down uh, Andrew's. Uh, yeah, no, sorry, yeah. For face. for those of you who can't see my face, I'm really crying a lot right now. Boy, um, yes, it's yeah, no. It's a ton. Uh, thank it's you a ton. so much for having me. Oh my god, I hope to never use my platform to talk about any good causes and only talk about the galactic. <laughs> <laughs> this, the best this. cause. Uh, um, <laughs> well, I I insist that you use it briefly to talk about uh, uh, your. Your current uh, the the cause of the day, which let me oh, let me yeah. say, uh, let's exit through the gift shop. And is there anything that you would like <laughs> to plug? I don't know anything that uh, anyone can go see in a movie theater right now as they're hearing this. I don't know what you're talking about. I can't remember. <laughs> um, yeah, but no. Hey, listen. There's this little movie that just came out. I guess if by the time this has been released, called uh, called No Hard Feelings. It's very very fun, and um, I had a really great time filming it. It's me and Jennifer Lawrence. She's trying to sleep with me. How silly. Um, it's, it's, please, it's a very very special movie, and I, I really think uh, I really think that you're gonna like it. Please check it out. Oh my God! I it's, well, I know so many people who are who are really rooting for it, and that you know uh, that a big that a crazy R-rated comedy with with a big movie star and a burgeoning movie star. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, everybody wants this to, to do well, and, and we're also excited to check it out, especially knowing that you are a now knowing you are a theme park fan and a and a, a halcyon hero. <laughs> so. You'll be able to tell. You know, it did impact my performance for sure. Yeah. Well, you did it. Yeah, you were. But you you came from the. You you undoubtedly you brought something 
from space back to this uh, your performance in this film. Yeah, that's right. That's that's exactly correct. I did. I was like, I now that I've been Gorn, I can be Percy. I think that was really <laughs> what I felt. I had to be like that was my hero's journey to wow, be able to wow. film that movie. Jeez, that's um, that's amazing. How do you think Percy would have fared? Uh, uh, <laughs> any like choices he would have made? Uh, if you had to guess his experience. I mean, honestly, like, wh- it's so funny, like, where we find Percy at the beginning of the movie, like, the, the as you can tell from the trailer, sort of the reason that he it, it goes on the journey that he does in the movie and why uh, Jen's character, Maddie, is trying to seduce him is because his parents are really concerned that he hasn't been brought out of his shell and that he's about to go to college and he's very antisocial. And I genuinely think instead of the whole plot of No Hard Feelings, he could have just gone to the Galactic Star Cruiser <laughs> and, like, come out of his shell there and then been ready to go to Princeton. Like, then, then he'd be, after being, you know... I feel like he'd probably... I think... Oh, God, I don't know, actually. He might have been first order. Like, I think he kind of needed to get something out. Maybe. <laughs> I, I, yeah. don't, I don't know. I really don't. I, I, I bet he would have had a really good time, though. Yeah. I think wow, he would have surprised wow. himself. The Jeez. exciting world of the Halcyon would prepare him for the wilds of North Jersey, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I mean, I honestly, yeah, 100%. Like, I, th- I, I mean, it's tr- in, in total earnest, like, so much of No Hard Feelings is about needing to kind of break out of one's bubble uh, before, you know, and, and, gr- and grow up and kind of evolve into a different version of themselves and the different st- steps that one takes to do that. And I think in a very microcosm way, the Star Cruiser, much as any sort of immersive experiences, much as any theme park is, but but more so is, um, is that opportunity to like escape yourself for a second and mm. come back having like learned something about yourself in any small or large way. Um, and I obviously like as, as somebody who performs and, and I, I wasn't so surprising that I behaved the way I did on the Star Cruiser that I like really, you know, took the reins. But I think for somebody to go and, and do that for themselves and having not done it before, I think it can be a pretty addictive experience and like something that really does does change them. And there were people there who were on their third or second voyages, like who like this was something they did because this was their opportunity to do exactly that. So um, I, I do think it's a special thing. And, and as sad as it is, as it's leaving, I really hope it, it's not a sign that things like this can't uh, succeed. And yeah, I think yeah. You got to re- creatively, you got to re- root for this for sure. Yeah. Disney, whatever. Yeah, they need to they need to work out their books <laughs> differently. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, hopefully the spirit of this uh, move moves into uh, yeah, so we something can else. One day sleep in Wolverine's bed. <laughs> <laughs> We're praying for this opportunity. Uh, uh, well, th- thank you for joining. It. Please come back anytime. This has been such a blast, oh. uh, Andrew. Uh, uh, and re- re- rooting for this movie. Kyle Mooney's in there too, right? He's a, did you did, did you have scenes with Kyle, or is that a different thing? I did. I did have scenes with Kyle. Wow. Kyle is amazing. Yes, and oh my god, of course. I I meant to bring that up. He like told like I, we we were in a so we filmed together in Montauk, which we shot most of the movie on Long Island, like just outside of Manhattan. But we filmed for a week in Montauk, and and Kyle's scenes with me were in Montauk, and we shared a van to Montauk together. Wow. And I don't know how it came up, but it always comes up to me. I was like, do you like rides? Like, you know, like, wow. do, like, hey. what do you think about? <laughs> and he was like, I was just on the, with my friends on podcast, the ride. And he talked about you guys. And wow. I was like, Oh my God. Oh, no podcast kidding. Wow, wow. Wow. Yeah. For real. Oh, geez. Love connecting these, these dots. Oh, it's a, mo- a movie with both of you guys. Big theme park fan uh, credibility <laughs> in the cast of yeah. this film. Rooting for it uh, so much. Uh, You're going uh, to like him in this movie a lot. It's very, very silly what he does. <laughs> great. <laughs> oh, great, great. Oh, excited. Uh, um, awesome. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks to Carly Wiesel for playing Matchmaker and uh, setting Andrew mm-hmm. up with us. Really glad to uh, connect the dots here. Appreciate it, Carly. Thanks, Brett Bohm, for producing this episode at Forever Dog. Uh, come, hey, uh, if you want to come see us in Las Vegas, please uh, yeah. join us at Podcast The Rides Big Vegas. Vegas Groove Blender, Saturday, July 22nd in Las Vegas. Tickets available at thespacelv.com. Uh, and for three bonus episodes every month, check out Podcast The Ride, The Second Gate, or get one more bonus episode uh, every month on our VIP tier, Club 3, all of that at patreon.com slash podcast the ride. Hmm. Uh, how's that for a plug pile? Uh, uh, it's a big pile. <laughs> cool stuff, fun stuff, people to thank, things to do, uh, but go see No Hard Feelings as well. And I guess try to 
hack the system, get to Star Cruiser before you, you can't anymore. And if you figure out any tips, tell Mike. But I think Mike's probably going to figure it out before you, whoever yeah, is hearing save this. Your t- <laughs> save your tips. <laughs> yeah, who am I saying? <laughs> who am I talking to? <laughs> Forever Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced Dog. by Mike Carlson, Jason Sheridan, Scott Gardner, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, Dog. please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe Dog. to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Dog. Keep up with the latest Forever Dog news by following us on Twitter Dog. and Instagram at Forever Dog Team and liking our page Dog. on Facebook. <laughs>